session which we are required to have each year. So I'll turn it over to Dr. Kozad. Yep, Mr. Lyman is absent tonight, so I'm going to talk in, in place of him. So in the handouts that you have, essentially, um, this is for the Greene County Auditor that we have to, every school district has to do this um, at the beginning of every year. And essentially, this talks about um, the levies and the uh, bonds that the school district has. So if you turn to the first page here, um, you'll see that it has um, our general fund uh, levies there, 54.8 mills, and then that permanent improvement of two mills, and then the recently passed emergency levy is 4.8 mills. Um, it was advertised as 4.9, but actually when it was certified, it went down by a tenth. So that is that is uh, the levies that we have on hand. And then you, if you turn the page, you see all the specific levies that we have and all the dollar amounts that they bring in, mm -hmm. um, all the way back from 1973 um, and all the way, again, to uh, special levy funds, uh, which is the permanent improvement and then the emergency levy that we had um, on the May ballot that was passed. You turn to the next page in this kind of old looking uh, trifold here. The estimated tax valuation, essentially that is what a mill is worth in our community. It's 671,817,000 uh, yeah, $671, is what a mill is worth. That, that's the estimated tax eva or valuation is 671,817,200. But you move the decimal three places to the left, and that will give you what a mill is worth. And so it's actually up from last year. A mill was worth six hundred fifty-seven thousand uh, dollars last year per mill. Okay. If you turn the page, there's the five-year forecast that was passed in November. So nothing has changed uh, in regards to that. And then you see all of the. Uh, Assumptions that mm -hmm. Mr. Liming had put in there. Mm -hmm. Again, none of that has changed. Right. And then you go on, and this is uh, both these pages have to do with 2003 uh, bond retirement. That was the issue that built the middle school and um, renovations at the other schools. Mm -hmm. And so um, the uh, auditor sets that bond every year, and so that's the information on that uh, particular bond on the middle school and the renovations throughout the school district. And that actually pays off in uh, about 2032 is we are finally done paying for that in what, 11 years or so? 10 years? 10, 10 years? 10 years from now. Yeah, 10 years. And then you go on to the next page and there's um, other non-tax levy funds of the mm -hmm. school district, their lunchroom fund, and then the uh, Title VI, Title I grants, and so forth, athletic funds. So those uh, amounts are on there. And then you have the permanent improvement uh, um, amounts on there from our permanent improvement levy. Mm -hmm. And then on the back page is that we advertise this in the Xenia Gazette. Gazette. Um, just that's part of the requirements. So, um, are there any questions? And again, Mr. Liming wanted me to let you know that if there are, uh, we can always amend this throughout the school year to or at another meeting. So this isn't um, this isn't um, set in stone. We can always amend this. But uh, just a lot of information about the financials of the school district in regards to bonds and levies. That's really the that part of the budget hearing. All right. Is there any questions or comments? All right. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> we will go on to our regular meeting at seven o'clock. I also want to let you know we will approve this during the regular board meeting. This will be a resolution during the regular board meeting. Right.
Mine is reading off of this when I do mm -hmm. it, or am I doing a repeat after me? It'll you'll just read off of this. Okay. I don't remember, frankly. Plus, this restroom is clear down at the far end. Um, I don't try those. Oh, this might be this might open. Be. If not, then out there and to the right. Clear all the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we probably want to keep those. Mr. Carpenter, Dave, David. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
There's the one behind you. Oh. It's not quite at seven, and Ver Verizon says it's not quite seven yet. So. Uh, <clears throat> really? Uh, Seven years. <laughs> Is that how long seven years? So it was six. This six. is the beginning of seven. So, all right. I believe it's seven o'clock. <clears throat> Go ahead and turn it on. Good evening, everyone. It's seven o'clock on Thursday, January 13th. Uh, it's time for a uh, Bellbrook Sugar Creek Board of Education meeting. This meeting is a meeting of the Bellbrook Sugar Creek Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business is not to be considered a public community meeting. There is a time though for public participation during the meeting as indicated on the agenda. All right, um, Mr. Lyme is absent this evening. Uh, so instead, I'll be asking Dr. Kozad to uh, serve kind of dual roles in a lot of ways this evening. So would you please call the roll? Let me do oath of office first. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm being reminded. Oath of office has to be done first. We can't call no, the roll. Right. Since Mr. Lyman isn't here, I'll be the one to administer the office. And first, we got Audrey Dorn. So, read your right hand and read, read, your, read, my uh, paper. read your oath of office. <laughs> I, Audrey Dorn, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties as member of the Board of Education in and for the said Lubbock Sugar Creek School District, Green County, Ohio to the best of my ability and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during my continuance in said office and until my successor is chosen and qualified. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Mr. Kinsey. He's right here. I, Michael L. Kinsey, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio 
and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties as member of the Board of Education in and for the said Elbrook Sugar Creek School District, Green County, Ohio, to the best of my ability and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during my continuance in said office and until my successor is chosen and qualified. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And Heidi. <laughs> I, Heidi A. Anderson, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties as member of the Board of Education in and for the said Belbert Sugar Creek School District, Green County, Ohio, to the best of my ability in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during my continuance in said office until my successor is chosen and qualified. Congratulations. Ms. Sanderson, can you sign and paint it? Yeah. We can make sure we have all of those. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. The, uh, the Records Retention Committee, consisting of the board president, the superintendent, and the treasurer, did meet uh, prior to this meeting and determined that there are no old financial records that need to be destroyed at this time. All right, with that, I think we're ready to do the roll call. Yep. Mr. Carpenter? Here. Mrs. Dorn? Here. Mr. Kinsey? Present. Mr. Price? Absent. Absent. Mrs. Anderson? Present. All right, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge I allegiance to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America and, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> all right. Um, at the beginning of each year, we elect officers uh, for the board. And first is uh, for the Office of President. Are there any nominations for the Office of President? I think it's appropriate to nominate Mr. Carpenter as um, really the only member of this board with any significant amount of tenure at all, as I'm the next most tenured person here tonight, and this is my one-year anniversary. Um, and yeah. I will say, until I started doing this, I did not realize the amount of extra work the duties of president entails. Um, and so I appreciate the work he has done. <laughs> because it's significantly more than I think my schedule and probably a number of, of the rest of our schedules would allow. So, right. well, thank you. Are there other nominations for president? All right, hearing none, is there someone willing to make a motion that we close nominations for the office of president? This is only to close nominations. I mean that we close nominations. Okay, Mr. Kinsey, is there a second? Mrs. Anderson. All right, we're voting, we'll do a roll call vote on closing nominations, but not for the role of presidency. So. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. All right, so nominations are closed. We'll now have an election for the role of president. The responses can be um, Mr. Carpenter, no, or abstain. So, oh, would you please call the roll? Mr. Carpenter. Mr. Carpenter. Mrs. Dorn. Mr. Carpenter. Mr. Kinsey. Mr. Carpenter. Mrs. Anderson. Mr. Carpenter. All right. So, I don't have to change places with anybody, so we'll continue on with the meeting. And just for clarification, um, also, too, um, there is no additional compensation for anyone serving in any other roles. All, all board members are compensated uh, the same. All right, we are going on to nominations for uh, vice president. Are there any nominations for the role of vice president? I would like to nominate Mrs. Dorn. Right, Mrs. Dorn. Are there other nominations for vice president? All right, hearing none, is there a motion to close nominations for vice president? 
motion to close. Mrs. Anderson, and a second? Second. Mr. Kinsey. All right, so we are voting on closing nominations for vice president. Uh, Dr. Goza, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. All right, motion passes. Nominations are closed for vice president. So now we'll vote uh, on the vice presidency, and the responses can be Mrs. Dorn, no, or abstain. How would you please call the roll? Mr. Carpenter. Mrs. Dorn. Mrs. Dorn. Mrs. Dorn. Mr. Kinsey. Mrs. Dorn. Mrs. Anderson. Mrs. Dorn. Mrs. Dorn is vice president. Uh, congratulations, and I look forward to serving Thank you, you. In, this, in these roles. OK. Well. Yes. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> All right, we're able to go on to good news recognition. We have a number of them, and I may not have these in the same sequence as they appear in the agenda, so uh, you might want to listen carefully. The first one is for Cadet Ethan Louie for the AFJ uh, Air Force Junior ROTC 2022 Summer Flight Academy. Ethan, come on up. Sure, please do. Well, I would like to thank the uh, school district for allowing the AFJRC program to be part of the High School. I would also like to thank my family and friends who have been there for me, especially when I was at my darkest times. They've always, they've never failed to bring me back. Um, and also, I would like to give a special thanks to Lieutenant Colonel Gangler for having such a positive impact on my life. Without her, she I would not know anything about the United States Air Force. Without her, I wouldn't know or get accepted into the AFJGC Flight Academy. Without her, I would still have the maturity of a third grade. <laughs> <laughs> I am honored to be part of the AFJGC program, and I'm grateful to be part of this public community. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Seth, more, more, Seth M. Burundi, uh, Associate Press, uh, Ohio All-State Football Division Three First Team Offense. <laughs> Ashton Alt, Associate Press, Ohio All-State Football Division Three First Team Defense. <laughs> and Ashton Kukin, Associated Press, Ohio, All State Football Division Three, Second Team Defense. <laughs> and Samuel C. Pine, Associated Press, Ohio, All State Football Division Three, Third Team <laughs> Offense. Trace R. Terry, United Soccer Coaches, excuse me, 2021 High School All-American. Trace Terry is not here this evening. Oh, we'll make sure that he gets that. Thank you. Brent Palmer, 2021 Ohio Scholastic Soccer Coaches Association, State Assistant Coach of the Year for Boys Soccer. Brent? Oh, sorry, not. Uh, Jeff Jenkins, 2021 Miami Valley Football Coaches Association, Division Three Head Coach of the Year. Uh, if I could have those four players come back up here real quick. I wanted to, to, to briefly acknowledge them for everything they've done for the program. Uh, everything they've done for the community you know, these last couple of years uh, have been very difficult to manage through COVID. Um, 
that they truly managed it like champions. And uh, so incredibly proud of them. I want to talk about each one. Real, real quick here, uh, Sam Vine, uh, if you don't know much about football, he plays offensive line, and he, he's not the biggest offensive lineman uh, in the state of Ohio. He's actually the smallest that was nominated to the All-State team, uh, but, but he's 100% hard. He uh, represents Bellbrook the way we want to be represented. Ashton Kukin here is, is uh, twice selected as an All-State defensive end, certainly one of the, the fiercest competitors that I've ever had the, the privilege to coach. Uh, Seth Barandi was our leading rusher. He, he broke the, the school record for uh, rushing yards in a season. He was also the number one rusher in the state of Ohio, uh, number 11 in the nation. Uh, so uh, really big stuff there. And then Ash Chanel, maybe one of the purest football players uh, I've had the opportunity to coach. Uh, one of the most unselfish leaders you know, that we've ever had. He, he can do it all. Uh, played both sides of the ball, special teams. Uh, tremendous leader. And um, I'm certain that uh, these three seniors, you know, if they choose to play in college, they're going to have bright careers. Uh, Sam will be back for with us for a senior year. But you know, any recognition or rewards that I get is because of guys like this who buy in and, and give everything they have to, you know, to their teammates, to their coaches, and their community. So I want to thank you guys. Thanks, right. sir. And Brian Roll, 2021 Miami Valley Football Coaches Association Division Three Assistant Coach of the Year. Awesome. I also have a recognition here. So January is School Board Recognition Month, month. and on behalf of the staff, students, and community, a sincere thanks to for all that you do. Um, as we all know, that school board members. Um, they're citizen servants who shoulder critical responsibilities and often make difficult choices for all for our district with minimal pay and um, just the, the challenges uh, of being a school board member in the climate that we're in um, is extremely, you know, an unselfish thing to do. So you serve as a link between the community and our schools. They're elected established policies to provide a framework for our schools. And it's not easy. Um, You've made a lot of difficult decisions, and I'm sure there'll be more difficult decisions uh, to come. But thank you for all that you do in uh, leading our school district and appreciate um, all the hours, time, and effort um, that you put in uh, for the good of not only our school district, but our community. Thank you. So David Carpenter. Thank you, sir. Yep. Audrey Dorn. Kinsey. Kevin Price is not here, and Heidi Anderson, welcome. Thank you, sir. Yep. You're welcome. All right, we're going to go on with the reorganizational parts of our meeting. So I'd like to recommend a service fund be established in the amount of $4,000 for FY23 for the pur purpose of board member professional meeting expenses as permitted by ORC 3315.15. And the FY22 fiscal year 22 rate was also $4,000. We have a motion. So moved. Mrs. Dorn. Second. Mr. Kinsey. Any questions or comments? All right, please call the roll. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, the next item is to recommend the appointment of the superintendent of schools as representative for federal programs and recommend authorizing the superintendent to file applications for federal programs and educational grants and to appoint representatives to complete all the forms and evaluations required by the program and or grants. We have a motion. So moved. Mr. Kinsey, and a second? Second. Mrs. Dorn? Any questions or discussion? All right, please call the roll. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. 
Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Motion passes. Recommend uh, the following authorization to be granted to the superintendent, treasurer, and president of the board, Bellbrook Sugar Creek Board of Education to carry out their duties involving person, personnel and finances. And this is a consent agenda for number seven, so A all the way through O. Are there any items that individuals want to ha have uh, separated out for individual consideration? I just have some comments overall, so okay. I don't need anything pulled out specifically. Okay. Um, I met with Dr. Cosette and Mr. Lining this week because I had some concerns. I understand that this is, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is infrastructure, how our school works and operates. Mm -hmm. And they were very gracious and answered all of my questions and walked me through it. Um, so my, I still have some uh, concerns regarding this item that cannot be addressed in this time frame. But I would like to start discussions with my fellow board members about um, in the climate that we're in right now under such a microscope, um, I really feel like we need to beef up our infrastructure and protect um, not only our taxpayers, but our administrators that are currently making these decisions. Um, so, um, and my, my concerns are not individual based whatsoever. It's more infrastructure based. Um, I would hate to leave anyone in our community or our um, administrators open to the um, failings of an infrastructure like this. So those are my concerns. When you say infrastructure, are you talking about like policies and procedures? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. Please call the roll. Uh, we need a first and second. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Move to adopt. All right. Mr. Kinsey? Second. And Mrs. Dorn? Thank you. Now we can call the roll. Yep. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? No. And Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Um, number eight is to recommend the incumbent president serve as the president pro tem in the annual organizational meeting in January 2023 until duly reappointed by associate board members or replaced by a duly elected successor at the annual reorganizational meeting. What it effectively means is until we elect a new, uh, re elect or reelect a president, um, the I would serve in that role until that time. For the beginning part of this for the meeting be next year. Right, right, for the beginning part of this meeting next year. Thank you. Do we have a motion? So moved. Mrs. Dorn? Second. And Mrs. Anderson for a second. Any, any questions or comments? All right, please call the roll. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Motion passes. All right, number nine, recommending the approval of membership and appointment of board members to the following positions. The, uh, the member of the, uh, we all have a membership in the Ohio School Boards Association, but then we would have specifically an Ohio School Board Association Student Achievement Liaison, a OSBA Legislative uh, LA Liaison. I'll, I'll kind of go through each of these and say who, who has expressed an interest in them. So for the le legislative liaison, Mr. Kinsey has expressed a, an interest in that. For the student achievement liaison, Heidi Anderson has expressed an interest in that. Uh, for the, uh, the delegate to Capitol Conference, I've expressed an interest in that. And Mrs. Anderson has expressed an interest in, in the alternate delegate. Mrs. Dorn, uh, for the representative to the Albrook Sugar Creek Education Foundation, and Mrs. Dorn for the Financial Advisory Committee, Mr. Price for the Safety Committee, and uh, Mr. Kinsey for the Greene County ESC Business Advisory. So do I have uh, a motion to approve for each of the, for those roles? Mr. Kinsey? Second. Mrs. Dorn for a second? Any questions or comments? Can I, can I double check that I? Sure. As we go down that list again. Sure. 
Kinsey, Anderson, Carpenter, Anderson, Dorn, Dorn, Price, Kinsey? Yes. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right. Dr. Kozad, please call the roll. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Motion passes, and I'll give you the okay. sheet that we have. We have you yep. on that one. Recommend approval of use of facsimile signature of the treasurer on checks. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion. Mrs. Anderson? Second. Mrs. Dorn? Questions or comments? All right, please call the roll. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Uh, Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Motion passes. Recommend adoption of the resolution to waive the reading of the records of proceedings of previous meetings in accordance with section 3313.26 ORC. Um, I would like to make that motion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll you, second it. Thank you. Mrs. Dorn is a second. Questions or comments? This is effectively just saying we aren't going to read the minutes aloud. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, we will not go through the entire previous meeting when we start off a new meeting. Are there any questions or comments? All right, please call the roll. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Recommend authorization for district's continuation of membership in the Southwestern Ed Ohio Educational Purchasing Cooperative and the Ohio Purchasing Cooperative Program and hereby approve the payment of all applicable <laughs> membership fees. Do we have a motion? So moved. Mr. Kinsey? Second. Mrs. Dorn? Question or comments? Can I just learn a little bit more about this one? Sure. Yeah, so it's a it's a purchasing cooperative that the school district is able to save money. There's hundreds of school districts that are part of this cooperative, anywhere from buying toilet paper to school, bus. uh, school buses, um, computers, uh, pens, pencils, anything like that. And so the you know the buying power of those uh, the EPC is what it's called um, just allows us to to better utilize our funds for that. So thanks. Yeah. And how much of the membership fees? Do you, you know what? I do not know the membership fees. It's it's a small dollar amount. Okay. Yeah, I and would I think, say sorry. a couple hundred. I mean, I, I can't remember. It's in the hundreds or it's a small membership fee. I think I asked this last year, but refresh me. Just because we are part of this does not mean we have to buy via this channel. No. If there's something we want to go Correct. separate. Mm -hmm. okay. And we definitely buy things on other places than that. Right. Like Amazon, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we do buy on Amazon also. So. Yeah, in previous conversation with Mr. Liming, you know, the, the membership fee pays pays us back a hundredfold. Correct. You know, it's just an incredible it's a difference. small dollar. Yeah. All right. Can you call the roll, please? Yep. So, Mr. Kinsey. Yes. Mrs. Dorn. Yes. Mr. Carpenter. Yes. Mrs. Anderson. Yes. Motion passes. So we now move into our regular meeting. I'm finished with our uh, organizational meeting component. So we'll right, and again, we'll take over uh, Mr. Liming's uh, part here for the treasurer's report. Um, again, these are all uh, pretty standard items. So the first is a request approval of the minutes for the meeting of December 9th, 2021. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Mrs. Dorn? Second. And a second from Mr. Kinsey. Questions or comments? Um, while you are not on the board at that one, you probably ought to just abstain. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Don't mean to be, be rude. Yep. I'm sure you, you're aware. I just want to keep us all. Yep. Up. So anyway. All right, please call the roll. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Abstain. And Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Motion passes. All right, and so the treasurer's report for the month of December 2021. Um, again, on the, the first page here of the general fund of the revenue and expenditures at this point of the year, 50% of the year has elapsed. And again, most of those numbers are around 50%, but again, just you know, the timing of what revenue comes in and what expenditures are coming out 
it doesn't obviously always uh, equate to 50% there. Um, then the next page is our balances at the end of the month. And then the next page, uh, again, is another way to look at the general fund of revenue and expenditures. Again, these are typical of what uh, Mr. Liming shows. And also the pie charts there, uh, real estate taxes, state foundation for the sources of revenue. And then the expenditures um, on, on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. And at this point, uh, employee salaries and wages and insurance retirement benefits is about 75, 74% um, at this point in the year. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. All right. I guess I should have voted. Okay. Um, Ed, we have a motion to approve. So moved. Mrs. Dorn, and a second? Second. Mr. Kinsey? Any questions or comments? All right, please call the roll. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Motion passes. All right, request approval of the 2022-2023 tax budget as reviewed during the budget hearing held prior to the reorganizational meeting per revised code 5705.28. We have a motion. I'll, make, I'll be happy to make that motion. And a second? Second. Mrs. Anderson? Any questions or comments? All right, please call the roll. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Motion passes. Request approval in advance of $1,753.20 from the general fund to fund 451-9122 network connectivity state grant. We have a motion to approve. So moved. Mrs. Dorn, and a second. Second. Mr. Kinsey. And that's a scenario where uh, we have a, a grant that we've had some expenditures from, but the grant money hasn't been um, uh, dispersed. dispersed. Thank you very much for the right word. And so we have to not end in a negative balance so therefore we have to do an advance from the general fund and pay back the general fund when um, when that disbursement comes in. Yep. So it can be six years to understand <laughs> that. <so. laughs> Any other comments or questions? All right, please call the roll. Uh, Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, we go on to correspondence. Any correspondence that uh, folks want to share with the rest of the board? I don't think I received any that you weren't all copied on. Mm -hmm. I normally share with when mm -hmm. something came specifically to me and not the others, but I think mm -hmm. you all were on all the correspondence I received. Mm -hmm. and because my email hasn't been set up for the full time, I did get a Facebook message from a citizen who was asking about what the trigger points were for us to be calamity days or virtual learning. So mm -hmm. um, I talked to Dr. Cosette about that and relayed information that Great. kind of just don't know always what those triggers are. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think we'll be talking about. And we'll review. Yeah, we'll be talking about that some more. Yeah. 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 All right. Dr. Kozad, then, uh, planning for 2022 and an update on safe return to schools. Yep, so board members have a handout here. So, again, there's three uh, specific sections to this presentation. Uh, again, looking ahead to 2022-2023 school year, I know that seems like we're really far away. We just, we just turned the calendar to 2022, but we're already looking towards next school year. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, trying to get ahead of the game here and try to uh, present the board with some information. And again, as we look at the information, I'm uh, looking more uh, for, yeah, this is the direction we want to go in and kind of uh, thumbs up on that. I'm not looking for any type of either approval, yes or no of that, but just a direction. Uh, that's the direction that we're good going with. So uh, if we go to the next slide here. So planning for 22-23, and then the next slide. 
So um, just to give a little background here, again, it's always get, good to give a little perspective on, um, on things as uh, we've had four phases. Um, we had four phases of reductions from the summer 2018 to 2021 due to the financial situation that we were in. And so those reductions totaled over $4.8 million, um, reduced our staff by about 33 staff members, 17 of those being teachers. Um, class sizes, due to the, all those positions uh, mm -hmm. being cut, staff uh, class sizes increase and, and uh, offerings decrease, such as the art, the STEM until bringing back this year, <coughs> gifted programs, library, uh, middle school languages. So those are just some of the programs um, that were decreased or, or done away with because of these reductions, but also the class size increases. Mm -hmm. So we go on to the next page, just again, give some more information, some, some background here. Uh, financial facts, as we uh, looked at the five-year forecast that was approved um, in November, and also that we looked at tonight in the um, uh, budget hearing, we do have an adequate cash balance in the five-year forecast. Mm -hmm. Um, the May 2021 levy passed, and due to that passage, things were reinstated for this school year, for the 21-22 school year, such as K-5 to STEM, brought back two librarians, and 31 supplementals for clubs, activities, and sports that directly um, impacted students. Mm -hmm. uh, also, earlier in the year, uh, uh, we had a uh, partnership uh, create a partnership with Green County Career Center that will save a projected $750,000 for them uh, to teach our STEM classes at the middle school starting this year and starting next year at the high school. Um, healthcare changes are projected to save the school district $4.3 million over the next five years beginning in 2022 as of just a couple weeks ago we started that. Again, those, those both are projected savings. And so um, you take a look at those and then also ESSER 2 and ESSER 3 funds the school district received was almost $1.8 million. Uh, again, $1.8 million is a lot of money. However, compared to some other school districts, that is um, a pretty small amount compared to what other school districts are receiving. Um, and then unfortunately for our sake, that is based on um, essentially the uh, the wealth of the community and the way the schools are funded, it's, it's, it's based on Title I funding. So those schools that um, in the community the, um, that have a, have a lower socioeconomic status within the school district are based on Title I funds. That's how those ESSER funds were, were rolled out across the country based on federal Title I allowances. We're going to go to the next slide. Um, so this is per pupil spending based on the uh, district profile report, also known as the CUP report that you can find on ODE's website. Um, that bottom purple line is Belbrookshire Creek Schools. Um, in FY18, we were at about uh, $11,576 $11, for per pupil spending. In FY21, we are at 11086 and obviously that's a direct uh, correlation to those $4.8 million in reductions that we've had. But you can also see similar districts um, and then state average. And again, similar districts are those that are identified by the, by the state as similar districts to us. Um, and then the state average, you can see the state average, we are almost $2,300 less per pupil than the state average and about $1,500 less than similar school districts. They are both trending up and we are trending down. So just give you a little perspective. Mm -hmm. um, next, uh, next slide here, grade level uh, sizes for FY18, again, fiscal year 18. So that's the 17-18 school year. So when we talk about a, a fiscal year, that's the end of the year. So that would be 17-18 school year all the way until next year, the 2022-2023 school year. And so as you look at these, I only put this year, the red is this year, so FY22. So the red numbers that are on there, the grade level sizes this year. And then I essentially moved those grade level sizes to the next grade level. So there's not, you know, so it's just a simple moving it to the next grade level. Kindergarten, I used the last five years average as the basis for projected FY23. So this year's kindergarten class um, 
was the biggest we've had since uh, 2000. 2002 is, is the information that I have that's gone back to. So it's the biggest since 2002. That's why we hired an additional uh, staff member uh, uh, to do that um, for those class sizes. Um, and so that is a big number. And essentially, if you remember, obviously, um, people kept their kids out of kindergarten last year, and then they all came in this year um, uh, due to that, that COVID you know, spike or whatever you want to call it there. And so obviously that 192 next year we're projecting because that's what usually happens. Um, folks go to private kindergarten and then they come into first grade. So we're projecting about 18 additional kids for first grade for next year. But all the other numbers from this year to next year are just straight go from one year to the next. Um, just to also point out, again, the red numbers are this year, third grade. That's the biggest since 2002. That's same with fourth grade both the biggest since 2002, but fifth grade is the smallest since 2002. Again, it might be longer than that, but that's the only information that I have readily available. Um, and so those are grade level uh, sizes and for K to five, and you go to the next slide. Those are the grade level sizes um, for grades six to eight all put together and grades nine to 12 all put together. Um, so again, the, the red is this school year and then next year is projected uh, grade level sizes for next year. So middle school going down just a little bit and high school staying about steady. Mm -hmm. So we're going to the next slide, average class sizes for FY18 through projected FY23. Again, the other slide was the whole grade level. And so this is if you break that down by the number of teachers that we have with our current staffing, that's how we get the, the grade level sizes or average average class sizes sorry average class sizes so you take our current staffing and then you divide it by the teachers that we currently have on staff and so again the red numbers are this year the projected for next year are the blue with our current staffing with the same grade level sizes that i discussed earlier so again if we keep current staffing at first grade level our average class size will be about 26 3 for next year Second grade, 23-4. The next year, uh, I'm sorry, next grade level, third grade is 25-5. Um, and you see those, those red class sizes are this year's class sizes. Go on to the next slide. Again, the same, same information, just for grades 4 to 12. Uh, again, you can see fourth grade is fairly similar for this year to next year. Uh, the same number of teachers. Fifth grade, is, if you remember earlier, I said that's the smallest class we've had. So we have one, one, one less teacher in that grade level because our numbers didn't dictate having eight teachers. But if you keep only seven, then we have an average class size of 30.4 for next year in fifth grade. Uh, Doug, can I stop you and ask a question? Sure. Um, are, when you were figuring these up, is this only looking at, um, like, primary, call it homeroom teachers, yep. you're not counting in other teachers, call it uh, special education teachers or Correct. other specials teachers? No. Okay. No, so for... It's based on number of homerooms. Yeah, based on number of homerooms. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, based on number of homerooms. And that's why it can get a little more complicated, grades 6 to 8, 9 to 12, just because there's so many more offerings there. Mm -hmm. So it's much more difficult to get a, a average class size at those grade levels because, again, there's more offerings there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and much simpler at the grades K to, K to five or one to five, because sometimes it's, we have eight teachers in grades one to four, divide the grade level by eight and there's your average class size. Mm -hmm. okay. And so looking at those numbers um, and, and trying to, our class sizes are a little big this year. And if you remember from the slide earlier, um, that unfortunately was one of the ramifications of the financial situation that we were in is um, to have, we were we had bigger class sizes mm -hmm. and so uh, trying to propose some class sizes next year that are more in line to I think where I would like to be and I hopefully that's where the board would like to be mm -hmm. um, uh, and some more reasonable class sizes and again these are averages it's not going to always true and work out that way or there might be you know like Miss Dorn like you were saying maybe in fifth grade we have some math classes that might be a little bigger a little smaller based on you know if it's a 
higher level math class or a gifted class or some other kind of class that might be a little smaller. So it's, 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 it's an average. But kindergarten about 20, first grade 21, second grade 23, third grade 24, and grades 4 to 12 or 25. Again, talking through, talking with administrators about these and uh, getting feedback from them. And obviously, they're, they're gathering feedback as we're going along here and also historical data of kind of where we've been and where we would like to be and, and, and trying to get those class sizes down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and so to reach those average class sizes, um, there's additional staff that is needed. And so to, to reach those additional, to reach those proposed class sizes, um, again, based on the numbers that are projected there, kindergarten would have to add a 0.5 teacher. So again, that would be probably a purple or gold teacher um, if the numbers um, justify that. First grade would be adding two teachers based mm -hmm. to get those numbers down. Second grade would be adding none. So second grade is kind of holding steady. Um, and third grade would be adding one additional teacher. And then in grades four to, tw four to 12, to get to about the average class size of 25, adding one in fourth grade, two in fifth. If you remember from earlier, mm -hmm. they only have seven teachers, where the other uh, one to five, one mm -hmm. to four have eight teachers already. So mm -hmm. to get them to nine teachers, you would have to add two there. One at the middle school, and that would be uh, getting art back also at the middle school or adding art back um, the other half. And then one and a half at the middle, I'm sorry, one and a half at the high school um, to get uh, English language arts classes down a little bit and uh, possibly investigating, get some of uh, the social studies numbers down. And again, those will all be based on um, as good as we can in those projected numbers. So if you go to the next slide, I do have graphs of these, but this is kind of the numbers chart of that. So the next few slides are the mm -hmm. kind of graphics of this. Um, and so essentially like kindergarten, uh, if we don't, if we keep current staffing right now, we'd be at about 21.9. If we add 0.5, we'd be at about 19.5. Um, first grade, keep current staffing right now, we'd have 26.3. Mm -hmm. By adding those two, we get it down to 21. Second grade, again, there's no additional in there because their numbers are lower. If you remember from... Mm -hmm. People held their kids out in kindergarten a few years ago. That's where they would be. So that number, that grade level numbers are lower. Um, and then I, I don't have to read all these through for you, but fifth grade is that other one. Like I said earlier, right now we have seven teachers. And so by adding two to bring it up to nine, you're down about 23.7. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, the, um, the class sizes have increased. And as we saw earlier, those the grade levels are, are increasing again not at a huge rate but we're much more up, mm -hmm. over 200 kids pretty consistently in our grade levels and that's what's driving those numbers up mm -hmm. and so graphically if you go to the next slide that's what these look like um, the red for example kindergarten the red is is what it would be without any, adding any additional staff and the 19.5 would be adding that additional staff. Again, I think we'll have a much better idea. Kindergarten registration is gonna be at the beginning of March. We would have a really good idea once kindergarten registration starts to see um, where we're at with, with that particular number. Um, so that's graphical grades K to three there. And then uh, the next slide is grades four to 12. Again, just a graphical of what I showed a chart mm -hmm. earlier. So to kind of summarize things here for 22-23, again, this is next school year. Again, I know it seems far away, but it really is not as we're trying to, to plan for things. So this would be adding a total of 11 teachers. So nine classroom teachers, those are the teachers I just went through, but also, um, and that would be including half an art at the middle school. So it would also include adding some of those things that we reduced back to the the offerings at the elementary level. So elementary art would come back to serve Stephen Bell and BCI, and digital literacy would come back to serve Stephen Bell and BCI. So they would split a teacher between those two buildings. And so you add those up and that's 11 teachers. Mm -hmm. um, also, 
reinstating busing as proposed during the October 14th board meeting, so expanding those eligibility zones, including high school busing, and we would have three tiers of, of, of routing, and um, that would impact start and end times for Stephen Bell, BCI, and the middle school. So as we are trying to shift those things around, um, that, would that would change some start times mm -hmm. uh, for those schools. Um, mm -hmm. And then also restoring the remaining supplementals that were cut from previous reductions. So essentially bringing back all the supplementals that were reduced uh, during our, our, our financial situation. And the next slide is, is a listing of all those supplementals and the other supplementals uh, uh, were clubs, activities, and so forth. This you can see is a lot of um, uh, that first part is, is all the um, sports and coaches and the next part is, is additional clubs and also chairpersons uh, for our different departments. We don't, we aren't, don't officially have those and also um, some other elementary production advisors at Stephen Bell and, and so forth. Um, and so that would really return our supplementals to, to the level they were before, um, before 2018. Dr. President, yep. so when these were cut, um, obviously these activities didn't go away, so did teachers volunteer for those? To keep those going or is that they, unpaid? they either volunteered or administrators took on those things or some things just didn't get done yeah. a lot of them didn't. some things just didn't get done okay. yeah. um i think this is probably a dumb question but if we bring back all uh particularly like four teachers at bci um and that's at stephen bell do we have enough uh, physical space to have like four additional homerooms <clears throat> in those buildings we're gonna be extremely tight at bc BCI, extremely tight. So there's going to be some moving going around, but we we have space, but there's we're going to, have to be a little creative with it. We're, okay. we're pretty much going to be maxed out at BCI. Because that building already feels very full when you look around. Yeah. It. yeah. There's gonna, uh, you know, there's some teachers sharing some rooms that maybe uh, utilize those rooms for small groups, and so we're just gonna have to use that space a little differently at BCI. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, mm -hmm. it's probably gonna be close to maxed out. It's gonna be really tight at BCI with those additional. Yeah. Directionally, I think this is great uh, to get toward the smaller class sizes. Um, I know that that's. It doesn't it doesn't seem like much to have, you know, three more students. I mean, conceptually, but it's it's a lot to have three more students in, in the classroom that's designed for not having those right. students in there. So that's right. directionally, this is this is great. And obviously, and I know sorry, I heard at, at one point kind of what the educational experts thought is like an ideal classroom size. I don't remember what that number is, but this seems to kind of get us there. This isn't dropping us way below. Right? No. Oh no. Expected averages. This is just finally getting us to where we should be. Am I right. Correctly remembering that. Yes. These are not out outrageously low numbers. These are pretty reasonable numbers. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the feedback we've gotten from teachers over the past few years, and again, the financial situation, it was, it, it was what it was. Um, mm -hmm. But it is not ideal to have 26 third graders in a room, 27, um, and you get down to 22, 23, and, and just much more attention to those to those students. In addition to the space, uh, BCI, the rooms are, are on the smaller side of BCI, so having those extra three or four students can make a big difference. Yeah. Okay, going on here, again, just another um, of adding the staff, and this is the financial piece to that whole um, the proposal here, or the, the, the thoughts here, uh, and this is using as uh, $75,000 is the round number for adding a teacher back. Again, that doesn't always work out as uh, the number, but it's a round number that we like to use. 125,000 for the remaining supplementals and then busing of bringing that back of adding additional staff for the busing. So the total cost, yearly cost is $1.1 million to bring all that back. And we do have ESSER funds um, that we have been very strategic of how we're going to use those funds and so um, my thoughts are using uh, those funds to fund seven teachers for the next two school years 
and that's about $525,000 that comes out to. And so the total cost of general fund uh, for years one and two separately are $575,000 per year. And then the impact on the five-year forecast as we continue to try to keep an eye on the bottom line mm -hmm. um, is $3.3 million is the total cost of the general fund for adding 11 staff members back, getting busing, uh, reinstoring busing mm -hmm. to a much more reasonable uh, level, and then the remaining supplementals. Mm -hmm. So questions on that? Okay, so again, like I said at the beginning, I was, I'm kind of looking for just a yes is the direction we want to go. And I don't want to, to necessarily ask for a resolution or, or that because again, as things kind of shift or maybe a nuance has to be shifted here or there, but the general concept of yes, this is kind of the direction we want to go. Um, and that allows us that flexibility also allows us to get out in front of, and that's why I'm presenting it this month, mm -hmm. um, to, to allow us to get out in front of that hiring. The pool for candidates is extremely, extremely small. Um, it continues to decrease. Um, you know, it's up to, it's probably even higher than, probably I think last summer I heard 40% less kids graduating, kids, adults graduating out of um, uh, uh, education programs in Ohio, mm. and I bet that number is is higher than that now. And that pool of candidates is much smaller. If we're able to get going on this. We can get out in that candidate pool much earlier than we've done in the past because of a levy being on the ballot or those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So, any other comments, thoughts? No, I, I think during my time on the board so far, and then I don't know about the two of you, but during my time during the campaign. I think this is in line with what the majority of the community wants to see as far as if we're going to bring things back. If people want us mm -hmm. to spend frugally, if we're going to spend, I think these are the things that the community wants us to spend on. Mm -hmm. um, sure, yeah. So I, yes, I think in general, this is, this is the general direction I'm comfortable heading. Mm -hmm. I'll speak for the rest of I'm, you, but. I'm, I'm very pleased with um, the proposals. I mean, I know you're going to adjust them as time goes by and so forth, but directionally, this is really very much where I'm, I'm happy to see us go. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. Um, so, again, as we move along here, you know, over the next few weeks, if you have any other thoughts or concerns, just let me know, and then mm -hmm. um, we can move on from there. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, let's move on to the next slide. Again, I, I just a, a thought from the just last section here. Again, I, I this is um, you know I think this is exciting for our community of getting those things back that were lost and also lowering those class sizes of of really getting back to what um, Bellbrook education should look like and needs to look like and what the community what the community expects. So um, I'm pleased that you're pleased that that's the direction. Um, let's go to update on safe return to schools plan. So there is a separate uh, file there, Mrs. Yeah. Sigmund also. So as you're doing that, I'll, I'll get you, a t this is, um, so this is tied directly to ESSER funds. So in order to be eligible for ESSER funds, school districts had to have a safe return to in-person instruction and continuity of service plans. And so we, we created one and this was, uh, was presented at the August board meeting. And so it's supposed to be updated about every six months. And so this is about six months from August. So um, to make it for um, easier viewing, anything that's in yellow, and board members have the, the paper copies, anything in yellow is different than what, or is an addition from what was there in August. And so again, this is on our website under um, um, Safe Returns to School. I'm not sure the exact verbiage, but it's, co it's under the COVID-19 section. Again, with ESSER funds, there are certain requirements with the this plan. It has to deal with face-to-face -face instruction, health and safety guidelines. It has to deal with um, instructional plan and academic gap filling and identifying social and emotional needs, and it has to deal with periodic reviews. So those are the things that have to be addressed. How the school district addresses those, that's up to the school district. So there aren't any requirements of what is in those. It's just those are the areas that have to be addressed. 
And so mm -hmm. mass, for example, you know, if you go to another school district, they might have something different in the mass section. Ours is we are strongly encouraging to wear masks while indoors, but not required. So again, that is uh, that was updated on on 10 29 21. Um, again, a lot of this, a lot of these pieces here are just uh, COVID related, health related, daily self monitoring, still student illnesses. On the second page of just December 30th, the ODH, ODH and um, updated their guidelines for at home exposures and then updated uh, mass to stay and test to play updates. So, um, we are implementing those. Those are just a kind of a piggyback of the uh, old guidelines that we are that, uh, that we uh, um, adopted or are, are are implementing. And so those are in there. Um, and then same thing with returning to school after illness. The at-home exposures of isolating for five days and then wearing a mask for five days. So those are, uh, again, aligned with ODH, which is aligned with the CDC. And so we'll continue to monitor those and try to stay aligned with ODH. Green County Public Health is essentially aligning themselves with ODH. They really aren't putting out something separately at this point. Okay. Um, the update to returning, or I'm sorry, the update there, the district um, hired uh, four cafeteria and recess aides to allow for better social distancing at lunchtime, if you remember, especially mm -hmm. at the elementary level. We went from three lunch periods to six lunch periods. Well, that created a supervision issue for our teachers and administration. So we we hired four, and those are being paid out of ESSER funds. Um, going on to the next page, again, instructional plan, academic gap filling. This is something that we're continually doing, whether it was a part of this plan or not, continuing to look at our student data. Uh, as grade levels, as a district, at, at individual student levels, and continue to try to, to provide as much help and support for our students as possible. We did, again, this is out of ESSER funds, hire an RTI teacher at Stephen Bell for the remainder of this school year only, um, just to, to provide additional support for kindergarten as those class sizes are a little bigger than what they typically have been, so to provide some extra support uh, to the to kindergarten and to Stephen Bell. Um, again, reviewing student data, like I said, we're continuing to do that, providing intervention, and then also holding a summer 2022 intervention program, targeted, um, targeted assistance to some of our students who, who need some extra help, where we can really see now that, um, now that they've had some schooling this school year, we really can better identify really was it just some time off and they needed some time to, to get back up to speed or really are there some really true things going on? They're obviously already getting help during the school year additionally. We aren't waiting until the summer, but then providing some additional support to them. And then also I'll add to here uh, of those seven teachers for two years of trying to reduce our class sizes um, as I referenced in the previous plan. Mm -hmm. Then on the next page, identifying social and emotional needs. Um, at the bottom there, using internal observation and data to drive decisions for appropriate uh, student supports, getting uh, support from the ESC with a consultant, part, two part-time consultants to help with that support at both Stephen Bell and BCI. Um, and then we also had some very high needs of specific students that we needed to hire some additional uh, staff. So we did hire six additional special needs aides to help specific students, and again, those those, uh, that came out of ESSER funds. Nice. And then on the last page here, periodic review, again, we met with um, administrators, obviously, on a continual basis, but also we met uh, with the SEA and SLASP in December, gathered their feedback where they gathered feedback from the teachers to try to see um, what additional supports are needed. And so some of those ideas, such as that extra intervention help at uh, Stephen Bell uh, were a direct result of the feedback from the from the teachers um, and the SLAS support during those meetings. And so at the end there, we're all supposed to, also supposed to have a local use of funds plan of how we're spending our ESSER funding, our ESSER funds. Again, these are, these are fluid uh, just because um, you never quite know how much, uh, you know, uh, specifically you know, for the teaching staff, the behavioral supports. So these can be fluid. We can change these throughout. 
but just to give a general idea with those additional seven staff members, out of our ESSER funds, about 60% of that will go to teaching staff, about 20% 20, 20 will go to behavioral support, so those are those aides. 7% is curriculum as we're addressing the phonics at the lower grade levels. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, science, math adoption, online digital resource as uh, money allows in that particular area. But phonics is the main uh, focus of that area. Those cafeteria recess aids, the support from the ESC, COVID leave, leave expenses, those, that was a uh, reimbursement from last year. As if you remember from the beginning mm -hmm. of the last school year, uh, staff by federal law were allowed to take especially essentially free COVID leave and so that cost the school district money so that that we did reimburse the general fund out of the ESSER funds for that and then the summer intervention programs for this summer um, so again trying to be extremely strategic um, with how we spend this money and just not right out of the gate spend money um, on something but to make sure that Again, as you see, the vast 80% of this, 80% of this money is going directly to student support of teaching staff to lower those class sizes and also the special needs aid. So, um, I, I think that's really important to to note. Any questions, comments, thoughts? I think this looks good. Appreciate the update. Okay. So um, you're welcome. And so I will update this on the website, again, with those changes in there. Um, and then we will bring it back um, no later than the summer to, again, to, to reassess kind of where we are and give you an update on where we're at um, for that plan. Okay. All right. Um, COVID-19 update. <clears throat> So as uh, we are all well aware of uh, throughout the state, throughout the country, throughout the world, there's a surge going on with COVID. And um, as we come back, came back from winter break here, um, just want to update the board on kind of where we're at this school week. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Um, so we do update this on a daily basis on our website as COVID-19 dashboard. Um, again, we, it's kind of a day behind just because today's the 13th, so today we would upload yesterday's information because, again, sometimes it takes a little bit of while to process those things. So as you see here, um, this is just from uh, Monday through Wednesday here. We've got 90 cases at the, at the school level here and eight positive staff members. Um, really no staff or, or students subject to quarantine because of those. Um, and then we also added at the bottom there the number of close contacts that were placed in mass to stay. So that is essentially a modified quarantine. A quarantine is staying at home. Modified quarantine is we're allowing that student to come back per ODH guidelines if they wear a mask for the specified time. So um, those are the numbers there. There's just a little disclaimer volume that we have. Um, this is the number of students that were placed in mass to stay. It doesn't mean that they may be there for the whole week. It's just that initial initial putting into that because kids are, are coming off the mass to stay at different days and so forth. And also, especially during due to the volume, some kids might um, be counted twice because they might be a close contact in one class for a kid and a close contact in another uh, class with another kid. So. Um, but it, it does give you a general idea of kind of where, where we're at with the close contact. So you could, again, it's not a one-to-one -one there, but you could essentially see if, if we were in the old guidelines of having to quarantine at home, those would be the kids that would have to be quarantining at home mm -hmm. under the old, old guidelines. Um, and you also see the percent of, of students there that are in the, the mass to stay close contacts at the bottom there. Um, it's also, uh, I think, important to note that we're seeing similar numbers. We, community, the region, the state, the, the nation, regardless of whether students have a mask or when or whether schools have a mask mandate or not, mm -hmm. um, and regardless of really mitigation strategies that are going on, everybody's trying their hardest. Um, but I think what was said earlier, if, the, if, the, if it's in the community, it's in the schools. And so it's obviously mm -hmm. in our communities and uh, everybody is working extremely hard um, but there's similar numbers everywhere 
um, whether it's a mask mandate or not. Mm -hmm. um, questions before we move on to the next slide. Again, so that is on. That's that's updated every day. And then if you move on to the next slide, so absences, you'll see the absence here for the last two weeks. There's a district average, and then the uh, the school uh, individual school average. And as you can see, um, the numbers steadily steadily decline of uh, that absence rate all the way down to 80 percent uh, today with 78% at the, the high school, 79 at the middle school, and in the low 80s there. So um, again, part of the reason, as you can see the graph there also, is part of the reason of, of uh, no school tomorrow is really those high number of absences. And really, even if we were in a, we a non-COVID situation, if we had absence rates that high, we would be looking at probably a, a calamity day or a school closure also in, in non-COVID times. Mm -hmm. um, but the other piece is, you know, our, our staff has done a great job, but the, the positives are fairly low. But there are there are staff out that are sick that are either awaiting tests or they have a spouse or a kid that's having the quarantine or sick and they have to take care of. And also combine that with our sub shortage. Mm -hmm. um, it just is, uh, it hit different buildings at different times, but it's extremely straining on our staff of the number of, of absences um, and the number of, of uh, uh, sub teachers that are out there based on the, the absences. We've had a lot of teachers covering. Thank you to them for, the, for mm -hmm. doing that. But again, as they continue to give up their plan period, that adds a level of stress to their um, to, to, to them, but it also takes time away from them planning and implementing or grading and doing what they need to do um, to order to prepare for um, to prefer, prepare for their students. Again, I don't know if people really realize that, you know, at, a, at other jobs outside of school districts, you have time to work on your projects, you have time to work on your, your planning and everything else, whereas a school district, as a teacher, you're with kids all day. You're with kids all day. So the only time that you can really plan is either a planning period or before or after school. And so um, I don't know if people quite realize that piece um, of, of teaching. Um, we are, we, sorry, we are yes. compensating those teachers that give up their planning time. Yep, so definitely. Yep. yep, they are compensating them for that. Yeah. Additionally, when you've got 20% of your students out, that's an additional workload as well. Right. Sure. Uh, trying, uh, because trying to keep those kids yeah. up to speed. Yeah. Um, yep. Trying to keep up to speed. And so, again, that, that's an, yeah, there's a multi, there was a multitude of reasons for canceling school tomorrow. Again, trying to, to, to get a break of students coming into school. And even though there isn't a lot of spread in school districts compared to what there is in the community, there is a little going on, but at least um, uh, getting those kids, hopefully staying home into their houses. And, and if they are feeling ill of, of staying home, getting what they need to get um, and coming back strong next week. Um, also those kids that have been out because we have had a high absence rate of trying to get them to catch up on their schoolwork. Um, and again, we are trying diligently to uh, get additional support of substitutes. We have posted some permanent daily sub positions. Mm -hmm. We wanted eight. We ended up with about three or four. And so even though we do have quite a few substitutes on the agenda today, some of those are student teachers. So that does help. So if there's a student teacher mm -hmm. and their teacher is out, they can sub just for their teacher. They can't sub anywhere else. So that does add a little, that does help a little bit. So you'll see um, we do have a fair amount of subs in there. Um, and so uh, you know, again, there's not an easy solution. If there was an easy solution, the whole situation, I think yeah, it would have been solved it. by now. So, um, again, just trying to 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 gather ourselves and make sure we come back strong for next school week. Um, you know, there really isn't any any specific triggers just because every if it can be different you know we can have x amount of staff out and maybe we can handle that on that day because we have the number of subs that are available on that day if we have x amount of staff on this on another day maybe we can't handle that because of, of the substitute so there's really not a lot of tr there's not specific trigger points it's a it's a looking at it holistically and trying to make the best decision um, that we possibly can 
the last thing that I want to do is go remote. That is not something that I want to do at all. Um, we will do everything we possibly can to stay in, and and that is not that is the last 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 resort. Um, and yeah. so if we have to do things like we do, like we're doing tomorrow, taking a day off, then we will do that to try to. To, to try to keep our kids in school. That's where they learn best. That's where they're the safest. That's where they're supported. Um, but, uh, so we will do everything we possibly can to keep them in school and learning um, as long as possible. Um, I, yeah, questions, yes. I think it's a good choice for tomorrow. You know, that gives, gives people the opportunity to kind of catch up and not be you know, exposed to somebody else who so forth. So I think it's, I think it's a good choice. Again, just kudos to our teaching staff, kudos to our nurses, kudos to our administrators, um, working extremely diff extremely challenging times and working extremely hard um, to do the best they can for the students in very difficult situations. And every time that I think we're out of the woods here, another thing comes back. And so it kind of ebbs and flows um, and, and maybe one day we can get past this whole situation. We have to. We have to at some point. So high hopes. High hopes. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we go on to open communication period. Which is the superintendent's report. Um, we have uh, for 17 new business A and uh, A and B, but you have a hand carry. So would you want to address the hand carry items? Yes, I'm trying to give you an opportunity. I'm trying to find my hand carry. Too many. It is. Thank you. I have okay. too many. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, too, on the too many papers. That. That's right. Too many things. So yeah, so uh, like I said, a, a lot of substitute teachers on our um, list here. Again, a few of these are uh, actually of this additional list. One on here that is one of our permanent daily subs. But again, trying to get as many subs as possible on our list to try to to accommodate those absences um, and also support secretary on there. All right, are there, board members, are there any items that you want to uh, pull out and speak to individually? All right, hearing, oh, do you, what, is what is that? Word, are we just doing the hand care? What are no, we just no. What, we what, what constitutes the consent agenda tonight? Uh, the, good question, thank you very much. That's it, <laughs> make that sure that's clear. The consent agenda items are on the original agenda, 17A and 17B. And then from the hand carry, right. the, the additions and deletion from A and the yeah. uh, new item for B. Got it. Thank you. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you. Any, anything that anybody wants to have pulled out separately? All right. Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve 17A and 17B as our content agenda? So moved. Mr. Kinsey? Second. Mrs. Dorn? Any questions or comments? All right. Okay. Please call the roll. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Anderson? Yes. I heard a yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Ah. Motion passes. Okay. Recommend approval of the amendments to the 2022 meeting calendar for the Belvoir Shore Creek Local Board of Education. Yeah. yeah. Do we um, do we have have a motion? We find it first. <laughs> Just about needed. Yes. So moved. Mrs. Dorn. And a second. Mrs. Anderson. Uh, and this is, these are adjustments mostly, um, well, or 
completely at our request to change some of the locations to be at the Bellbrook Middle School uh, on a regular basis and then uh, at the uh, individual schools at least once a year. Yep. And that's not an, un an undue strain on the middle school? Um, Good. Good they're, they're extremely pleased to host us. <laughs> <laughs> they're, <good. laughs> they're very gracious. They, that's they right. They are nice been, been very gracious. We, we do appreciate. We know it's extra work on there, so we do appreciate that. Thank you. It's the curse of having a lovely building. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's good room. It's a, it's a double edge. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Questions or comments? Let's call the roll. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Uh, Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Motion passes. Out of state travel, I uh, recommend approval of out of state travel for the following physical education teacher, Sasha Taylor, to New Orleans, Louisiana, April 26th to the 30th, 2022, to attend the 2022 Shape American Convention. Um, this is at no cost to the school district. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Mr. Kinsey? Second. Mrs. Dorn? This is. A great opportunity for for Ms. Taylor. She does a great she does a great job, for sure. Very innovative. She does a very nice job, especially with the Health Moves Minds program. So mm -hmm. um, she she does a lot of presentations, does a lot of involvement with uh, mm -hmm. with uh, Shape. So um, she represents us very well, both the state and the national levels, and um, she does a fantastic job. So. All right. Any questions or comments? We did get a motion, didn't we? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Please call the roll. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Motion passes. So items, information, discussion. So first semester bullying report. We need we uh, by law have to. Re uh, do bullying report uh, twice a year. And so this is from the first semester. So these are the number of uh, bullying uh, situations that were reported to us. Um, and so Stephen Bell, we had one, BCI, we had two, the middle school nine, the high school three. And again, um, when uh, these situations come up, we take them very seriously, investigate them fully. Our administrators, our counselors, um, do a very nice job of, of getting to the bottom of this and not tolerating um, these type of situations. And just again, just to know, just because there was a report, that doesn't mean there was actually bullying going on. It just there was a report. We investigated, we looked into it, mm -hmm. and then took care of the situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that clarification too. Yep. Um, on this topic, I would like to say the presentation that occurred at the middle school was that last week, or was yep. that the week prior? last week, last, running week. Yeah. last week um, was really fabulous. Um, so kudos to whoever's idea that was, kudos to you all for hosting it. Um, as a parent, it was incredibly helpful um, and it was, I think, really good information for everyone in the community, but it, it, I think it felt good to at least feel like we were trying to do something um, because um, not just bullying, but mental health issues uh, with our kids are um, exacerbated, I think, during these times, as they are in the mm -hmm. in our adult world, in our online right. world, and our right. world in general. So, um, but that presentation was was incredible. I hope we continue a relation, uh, relationship with that organization. Yeah, so Dr. Chigarelli, from its time too, he uh, talked to all the students at the middle school and even had some uh, classroom visits, so much more smaller groups at the eighth grade level, and um, just well received and did a very nice job. So again, Mr. Eckley, Ms. Hill, uh, bringing him in and, and having a parent session also, I think was extremely helpful. We had maybe a hundred, I would say, a hundred people, 125. It was, it was a good turnout. Um, so a very important topic, and it takes everybody to together to deal with those kind of situations and to support everybody. Kind of that's vote true. of approval from a seventh grader, which that's saying something, because <laughs> nothing does. And it was no cost to the district, correct? Correct. And um, is there plans to bring it to the high school? We're in those discussions, okay. yes. Great. Great. 
just so you know, we are following up with that, and our um, student council is now going to take the lead in that. They are going to do, uh, we have class meetings scheduled for the 29th, and they are going to actually make a presentation of their own, kind of formulating the information that they heard from Dr. Ciccarelli and how that they want to see it brought into their school. So, That's great. Nice. We have kids involved. Good. Nice. That's great. Okay, and then uh, lastly, as there is this does this does this does need a vote. So this mm -hmm. is for OSBA Legal Assistance Fund, and we've done this in the past also. So this is not something new. Uh, I'll just read this: For the Bellbrook Sugar Creek Local Board of Education, which is support in the efforts of other boards of education to obtain fair rule judicial decisions, and whereas uh, school boards associating legal assistance fund has been established for the purpose. Therefore, the board arrived resolves to participate in the OSBA LAF for calendar 2022. And authorizes the treasurer to pay the LAF $250 to sign this 13th day of January 2022. So not a lot of cost to the school district. Do we have a motion? So moved. Mrs. Dorn and, and Mrs. Anderson for a second. Any questions or comments? I think it's a great choice for us. All right, please call the roll. Okay. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Motion passes. All right. That brings us to the end of our agenda. So do we have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Mrs. Dorn? And a second? Second. Mrs. Anderson? All right. Dr. Kozad, please call the roll. Yep. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Motion passes. We are adjourned at 824. In honor All right. of School Board Appreciation Month. Right. Yeah. School Board Appreciation Month. <laughs> Thank you all very much.